All right, guys, we are going to add to our notebook again today. Um, starting in the table of contents here, we're going to be adding pages 7 and 8. We're going to talk about solving systems. So for the notes, I'm going to leave page 7 blank. I'm going to write some notes on there with you guys. And then on page 8, the one that we are adding is this one here. Okay. So taking a look at that one, um, actually what I'm going to do, the stuff that I'm going to write on page 7, I'm going to write on the back of this. Just because, again, I don't want to write in the notebook. I already wrote some stuff down in there from class today. So we want to write this on page 7. I'm just going to put it on the back. So when we're talking about solving a system, what a system is, is just multiple equations that help me to solve for multiple variables. Okay, so like last week we were talking about just solving for x. When I solve for one variable, I just need one equation to do it. When I need to start solving for two variables, which likely happens a lot in Algebra 2, or even more variables, if I need to still solve for three variables, or four variables, or five, I need more equations. So if I want to solve for two variables, I need two equations. If I want to solve for three variables, I need three equations. If I want to solve for four variables, I need four equations, and so on and so forth. Now, we're not going to go that crazy with it. We're just going to solve for two variables today. And so one way that I like to think about it, I am a very like image-oriented learner. I like to see the things. So really, when we're talking about solving equations, we're talking about lines that are being drawn on a graph. And we're not going to get into graphing today. I promise we will tomorrow. But I want to show you visually what can happen here. So what I could have is that a line is going along, doing its thing. And then another line gets drawn on the graph. And those two lines happen to intersect. OK, so this is a system because I have two equations on the same graph. And we want to look for where those two equations intersect each other. And so since they intersect right here at one spot, we have one solution. However, like I said, we're going to be solving for two variables. And the reason that it's two is because this spot really has two numbers, the x number and the y number. Now, another thing that can happen, because like if I'm drawing two lines in a graph, they might not always intersect. I might have lines that are parallel. Okay, So the two lines are traveling along at the same speed, and they never, ever intersect each other. So again, if I'm looking for where they do intersect, and these ones won't intersect, this means I have no solution. Because they don't touch each other anywhere. There's actually one last thing that can happen. And this is kind of the weirdest one because you'd think you'd notice. But what could happen is I draw my line on my graph. And then I go draw the other one. And it happens to be right on top of this one. They're like the same line on top of itself. So again, if I'm looking for where they touch each other, or not at all, this one, they touch each other all the time. So we have infinite solutions on this one because literally anywhere that I go is a solution. So this is a solution, x comma y. This is a solution, x comma y. They're all solutions, OK? Now, like I said, tomorrow in class we're going to talk more about how to solve by graphing. But I kind of wanted to show you what it means when we solve. Um, today I want to talk about how we solve algebraically. Now, before we actually even get into that, there's kind of four ways that we can solve. I never want to solve with a table. Like, that's kind of the, like, it's not a great approach because you're just searching through numbers, looking for where they match, and it's just like, it's just not great. It's too time consuming. If I have a straightforward algebraic way to do it, that's probably the way I want to do it. There are some reasons to argue why graphing is good, and we'll argue those tomorrow. 
But for today, let's talk about how we solve algebraically, okay? Because this will feel like a lot like what we did last week. So there's kind of two ways to do it. We can solve by substitution. So we'll talk about that way first. Um, so if I take my example over here, this negative x plus y equals negative 7, and x plus 4y equals negative 8. If I'm going to solve using substitution, I actually first need to get a letter alone. So get a letter alone. Um, now, you might be looking over here and thinking that there are letters alone, there are not. Y is real close to being alone, but X is over here with it. And on the bottom, X is real close to being alone, but kind of Y is over there with it. So if I'm first going to get a letter all alone, I'm going to take this bottom equation here and get X all by itself by subtracting that 4Y. And so we end up with x equals negative 8 minus 4y. And so I've succeeded in getting a letter all alone. Once we have that, we do the substitution part. So step two is we are going to substitute the thing that we just got into the other equation. Okay, so this thing that I just got here, I need to put that into my other equation, specifically in place of x, and that's because this is what x is. Okay, so step two, we want to substitute. So I take this top equation here, the one I haven't used yet, but in place of x, I'm going to put what it equals. And it's always good to substitute stuff in with parentheses around. And then I finish the equation, so plus y equals negative 7. Now it's good to have parentheses because if there is a number in front of x, like there is here, negative 1, I need to distribute that and multiply it to everything. But now at this point, it's super nice. I only have one letter to solve for, so we're going to solve for one letter right now by distributing. So I'll have 8 plus 4y plus y equals negative 7. Then I can combine like terms. So 5y. And then we can solve by subtracting the 8. So 5y equals negative 15. And then dividing the 5. So y is negative 3. Um, I need a new color. Here we go. So we solved for one letter by doing this whole process here and getting y equals negative 3. That's only half done, though, because we're trying to solve for x and for y. And so the last step is we want to substitute one more time. So substitute the number you just got. Into the first equation really wherever, but if I go back to that first equation that I made, it's kind of easier because x is already alone. So if we take that, x equals negative 8 minus 4, but in place of y, I put negative 3 because I know that it is. Like I just solved for that. I end up with negative 8 plus 12, so 4. And then kind of the best way to write your answer is as an ordered pair. So like x comma y, so 4 comma negative 3 would be my final answer there. Boop, boop, boop. So that's one way that we can solve algebraically. The other way is by elimination. Okay, so elimination is sometimes the preferred method because it feels a little faster. Okay, so elimination is the other method I want to talk about with you today. I'm going to write the directions on this side this time just to keep it separate. So same, uh, actually, yeah, directions over here. 
problem over here. Let's take that same equation though. So negative x plus y equals negative 7, and then x plus 4y equals negative 8. So we already know what the answer should be, but we're going to do a different process to get to it. So if I want to do elimination, I need all letters stacked and on the same side. So this problem is really set up perfectly for that because the letters are stacked, like X's are on top and Y's are on top, and they're all together on one side of the equal sign. If you have that going on for you, you probably want to do elimination. Now the other thing that you want to look for, so like that was kind of already taken care of for us, is that you want opposites. When I say the word eliminate, I mean add up to equal zero. So right now I do have opposites because negative x and positive x are opposites of each other. If I didn't, if I was looking at a problem like this, I could still get opposites by multiplying the entire equation on top by negative 4 because then the y's would disappear. So if I have opposites already, that's great. But if I don't, I can multiply to get opposites. Okay, so you can do that if you don't have opposites already. Third thing, we're going to finally actually do something now. Add your two equations. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's add it up. If I add these two equations together, like straight up old school addition plus big bar, negative x positive x is 0. 1y plus 4y is 5y, bring down my equal sign, negative 7, negative 8 is negative 15, and then I solve for y, and y is negative 3. So add your two equations, solve for a letter. We kind of did both those things, which is all well and good. And then I just need to go solve for my other letter now, so substitute. the number that you just found into any equation. Okay, so for step four here, let's come over here and do step four. I can pick any equation I like. Um, even if I had multiplied it by it, I could use that one. I kind of like the bottom one better only because it has the less negatives, I feel like. And the thing is, I just found that y happens to be negative 3. So I'll plug that in. And then we're just going to solve for x now. So we'll have x minus 12 equals negative 8. And then I'll add the 12. So x is 4, just like we already knew from the last problem. And again, as always, to write our final answer, we want to write it as x comma y. So 4 comma negative 3. Okay, so I know that was only two quick examples, but hopefully you can kind of follow through and do the rest of them. We'll talk about all of your questions in class tomorrow, and we'll also talk about how we solve by graphing. So good luck, and I'll see you on the next one.